Well, let's begin. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the lectures and uh, post them on YouTube uh, so you guys can uh, catch up or go over things as needed. Um, and we're not going to do anything today, but I just want to make sure that the view is fine and the audio is fine and all that. So, we'll just uh, uh, we'll run that today. So, like I said, nothing too much, uh, too crazy planned. I'm just going to go through the syllabus with you. Welcome. This is Applied Calculus 1, Math 1203. Um, and this is section R03. And this is the meeting time, and that's the room. Obviously, you know that because you're here. Uh, there's several versions of Calculus 1 at this college, so make sure you're the right one. Applied Calc is usually for biology majors, a lot of people in health sciences, things of that sort. Um, so if you're, if you're one of the other science majors, you probably should not be here. So if you're physics or chemistry or uh, math, computer science, you shouldn't be taking this calculus, you need the other calculus. Um, this one is uh, a different version. Um, so yeah, my name's Javon, call me Javon, that's fine. This is my email, jsmith06 at fordham.edu. You know what some of you are thinking? Yes, I am the 306th J. Smith. That's me. Um, this is my office hours, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, or by appointment, which you can email me to set up an appointment if you can't meet these times. My office is JMH423, which is through those doors, I'm right around the corner, which, by the way, it's a couple doors down from the Math Tutoring Center, which I'll be mentioning a little bit later, which is in 410, which if you go through those doors, the room's straight ahead. Um, we will be using the textbook Brief Applied Calculus by Stewart, and uh, this is my website. There are many like it, but this one is mine, and I will create a class web page. So at the website, I hate whiteboards. I will create a class web page with uh, lots of important stuff. So first of all, I will post an electronic version of the syllabus with clickable links to anything that I link in there. Um, reviews for tests and quizzes. Finals, etc. I will also post like answers to quizzes, as well as blind versions of the quizzes themselves, solutions to tests. Lots of important info. Uh, I'll also post things like uh, the link to the YouTube videos and anything else that I need to link to, including the online homework. So we have homework here, um, and it will be done online through the publisher. So I'll give you more information on how to access that later in the week. Uh, so that's my contact information, the class location, the website, which is important. Calculators, not allowed. So if you have to wean yourself off of those if you are attached to them. Typical grading chart, it's here for a guideline. Um, more or less, I'm going to be grading on a curve, and I will incentivize improvement. So if you start off the semester on a, a rough foot, it's fine. As long as you work hard and improve, I'll tend to kind of ignore you messing up if you can prove to me that later on you, you can come back and you, you learn. Um, so, but that's just... Uh, the generic grading chart just as a guide. Um, the grade breakdown for the class will be as follows. Quizzes, you will have a quiz every week when you don't have a test. So every week you'll have some sort of testing. I'm thinking every Tuesday uh, will be that. And I'll probably give you tests on Friday. Um, but quizzes, pretty much every Tuesday on any week that you don't have a test. And that will account for 20% of your grade. Uh, homework, again, done online, that will account for 10% of your grade. Participation, I took attendance today. I'll take attendance every week. And you'll actually get credit for showing up. So that's nice. Uh, In-class test, 30%. Uh, you'll have two. They're non-cumulative. So they don't overlap unless it's incidental. Um, and then you'll, there will be a cumulative final. So you mess up on test one or test two, you can prove that you learned that material by doing well on that material on the final. Uh, so the tests, they are going to be 50 minutes an hour long. The final is about two hours long, so that's that. Moving on. So nothing crazy here. The typical policy, uh, 
Makeups for tests, you have to have a very good and documented reason. No makeups for quizzes because I'll drop two quizzes. No makeups for homework because I take the policy. I hope I typed it here. I did. So if you get 85% overall on your homework, I'll automatically bump that up to 100%, so you're allowed to miss 15% of stuff. Don't try to miss 15%, but you know, you have some leeway there. Um, so uh, no makeup for quizzes or homework because I give you some leeway here, but for tests, if you have a good reason, you can make those up. Uh, attendance, very important. Uh, show up, be on time, and don't ghost the class. Like every now and then I have a student who just stops showing up and they don't really say anything, don't do that. Um, because I'll have to give you this grade, that's a WF, which is kind of like a withdrawal <coughs> combined with an F, and it, it basically says you just stopped showing up and didn't tell anybody. It's not good to have on your record. Uh, work ethic, work hard, read ahead. Uh, we'll talk about what you read ahead with in a little bit. Um, uh, homework, quizzes and tests. So this is just some basic information about homework. Like I said, quizzes every week. Quizzes will mostly be short answer, fill in the blank kind of things. Maybe I'll ask you to sketch some uh, stuff. The point is that I can grade them very quickly and get them back to you. Uh, test though will be more long form. You have to show all your work, you have to write in a booklet or whatever. The final exam is also going to be long form. You get partial credit on tests and finals uh, for your answers uh, by showing your work. Um, in terms of how much work you have to show, pretty much do as I do. When I write down problems on the board, I will write them out in the way that I expect you to write them out. So if you follow me, you'll be fine. You'll know exactly how much work to show. Prerequisites. Uh, algebra, very important for calculus. Uh, Pre-calculus, very important for calculus, which is kind of the same thing, actually. Um, uh, it's more important that you are, have very good algebra skills, even than having taken calculus before. A lot of people who take calculus in high school and they do horrible in calculus in college. Um, but uh, the, there's a saying that I failed algebra and calculus because that is actually the only reason anyone ever fails calculus is because of algebra. Um, so if your algebra skills are poor, that calculus is going to be hard for you. You really need to build up on your calculus and the classes that came before this, and particularly algebra. Uh, blasphemies, this is a very important thing. So. Uh, very inflammatory language there, but it's important. These are some big mistakes that I expect you to never make. Uh, a lot of mistakes that I've seen. Well, it's not even a lot, but the majority of uh, mistakes kind of come from, a hefty amount come from avoiding these things. So there are the do nots. Sometimes knowing what to do, uh, uh, sometimes knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do. The first thing to not do, do not cancel across sums. Just so you can't say I never told you what that means, uh, let me tell you what that means. So let's say you're working on a problem, you end up at a point where it looks like this, and you're like, I can cancel the twos. You cannot cancel the twos in this case. Uh, this is what we call a sum because it is separated by a plus sign or a minus sign. So this thing over here is a sum. A bunch of terms connected by pluses or minuses, which is a separating kind of operation. You cannot cancel once there is a sum. You cannot cancel across a sum. You can only cancel across a multiplication or a division. So if you had this, That, you're allowed to cancel here. That's okay, that's correct. Not correct, that's correct. Okay, so um, very common mistake, happens all the time. Uh, do not do that, do not cancel across sums. Make sure when you're canceling something, uh, you're canceling across a multiplication or a division. Um, another thing that you should not do, powers across sums. What do I mean by that? So if you see something like x plus 2, all squared, and like, oh, you can just square each of x squared plus 4. Not x squared plus 4. Very incorrect. Very wrong. 
highly illegal. Do not do that. That is incorrect. Um, what is x plus 2 all squared? x plus 2 times x plus 2. Yeah, it's, a, it's really, it means x plus 2 times x plus 2, and you can expand the parentheses, which we call foil for first, outer, inner, last, and you can get eventually x squared plus 4x four four x x plus 4 plus 4. Right. Because a nicer way than actually doing this is to actually just know a formula. It's worth memorizing the square plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. So it's the first term squared. This times this times 2 gives you the middle term, and then the last term squared. And so that's how you expand. So by just distributing the power across the sum, you actually miss a term. So that would have been incorrect. What about this one? How do you simplify this? Multiply it by, well, one half, the, the power, one half. You cancel the square. And then? It's a trick um. question. You can't actually do anything. <laughs> That's as simple as it gets, right? However, a lot of people would just square root each part and write that. And that would be wrong. And when they do that, in fact, what they're trying to do is they're taking this half power and they're applying it to each part in the sum. You can't actually do that. That would be illegal. Very common. It happens all the time. Um, so don't actually do that. This one is even worse um, because to actually expand a radical, you need an infinite number of terms. So it's not like you're missing one guy. You're missing a lot of people. Um, so radicals are powers. That's going to be important for calculus, knowing that you can write a radical as a power at any given time. Um, in fact, we prefer the power way of writing things to the radical way for a reason that we'll explore later. But the important thing is you can't distribute a radical across a sum. You can distribute radicals across products. So if it's x times x plus 1, you could write that. That is actually correct. Um, don't see, not very useful though but it's, it's not wrong. So you can actually distribute powers across products. So even if you had, say, x times x plus 1 squared, you could actually do this. That's correct. Um, but it's because there's a multiplication here. So powers distribute across multiplication. They do not distribute across sums. So be careful. You can't take a radical and attach it to each part of something. Um, that's very wrong. Uh, another thing that you don't want to do, sounds silly, but I've seen it done, uh, do not divide by zero. It doesn't make any sense. Um, we'll talk about a topic called limits, where it would seem like we're dividing by zero, but we're not really, and when we will, we'll discuss that when we get to it. But if you, you do something like one divided by zero and write infinity, not infinity. 1 divided by 0 is completely meaningless. It's gibberish. You cannot have 0 in a denominator at any time. Um, very illegal. If you end up in a situation where there's a 0 in the denominator, it means you either did something wrong or the problem you're trying to work out has no solution. You cannot have a 0 in the denominator. Okay. Um, do not divide by 0. It doesn't mean 0. It doesn't mean infinity. It doesn't mean anything at all. Now, there is another thing that I want you to pay attention to, but it's not really a do not, it's more of a do. I guess I could say do not neglect to do this, but whatever. So, what you do want to do is do use parentheses appropriately. <coughs>
So all things that you never really think about in math class, but notation, language, definitions, vocabulary, these are very important to being good at mathematics. Um, make sure you're writing down things properly, and a lot of times half the work will be done for you. Um, so I'm just going to do an example uh, where proper use of parentheses is important. Suppose I, I gave you f of x equals 2 minus x minus x squared. And I ask you to compute f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. What's that called? It's called the difference quotient. Right? So that's something that you would have seen before in algebra class and pre calc class. In this class, I'm going to tell you why that expression is important. But let's say we all agree that's important. Um, how would you actually calculate it? What do you do? What's the, what's the first thing you write down? Yeah? Plug in x plus h wherever there's an x. Right. A common mistake is to just copy this and put a plus h at the end. Very wrong. Um, Notation-wise, what this means is the x plus h is in place of the x. So everywhere I see an x, I will now write an x plus h. And it's actually important to put parentheses in this situation. So I would have 2 minus, open parentheses, x plus h, minus, open parentheses, x plus h squared, minus the f of x. Well, that's the original. So that's 2 minus x minus x squared all over h, right? No, that's wrong. What's wrong? Don't just. <laughs> don't just let, just because I write something on the board, don't don't trust anybody. Make sure you know what's going on. That's not correct. What's wrong? You have to distribute the negative. Yeah, so in other words, there should be parentheses here as well. Now, a very common thing that would happen a lot of things will they make a mental note. They kind of know there should be parentheses there and the signs should change. But a lot of times when you make a mental note of something, and you're working on a very large problem, by the time you get down to the fifth, sixth, seventh step, you're going to forget all these mental notes you were making along the way. Actually write down the parentheses. Use them. Write them in. Uh, write the proper notation so you'll never actually make a mistake. It happens all the time um, where someone doesn't write a parentheses and they just forget to change the signs later on. So that's actually what the correct first step would look like. What would the next step look like. Okay, so this would be 2 minus x minus h. That's going to be minus x squared minus h squared minus 2 plus x plus x squared all over h, right? No, that's wrong. What's wrong? Yeah? I distributed the exponent, which is highly illegal. I just said you shouldn't do that. Right? You can't just put the square right here. See what I'm saying? Like when I was writing it down, it kind of, obviously I know not to do that. In a large context, when you're doing the multiple things at once, it's easy for these mistakes to slip in there. I made the distribution across some mistake here. That is not what it should be. It's uh, this guy here is actually x squared plus 2xh plus h squared by the formula earlier. So that's actually minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 2 plus x plus x squared. Okay, now what? Combine like terms. Combine like terms, so 2 minus 2, that's gone. x minus x, that's gone. x squared plus x squared, that's gone. Now, if you didn't have this, that wouldn't have happened, and it would have been bad. Uh, so we have minus h, minus 2xh, minus h squared, all over h. And at this point, we can cancel the h, right? Yeah. You cannot cancel the h. 
all these mistakes that I'm making on purpose, I've seen them happen. <laughs> like, I'm not just making this up. I've actually seen this happen. Like, if the, the steering gets through this correctly, I'm like, yes, you go. Eventually, they kind of get slack. They kind of just stop paying attention. You always need to be vigilant. These mistakes will happen at any time. Uh, we can't actually cancel the H's. So, what can we do? Distribute. Right. Distribute. Factor out the H on top and then... Factor out the H, right? So factor means you put parentheses in where there weren't parentheses. Distribute would mean there were parentheses and then you got rid of them. Oh, I meant like distribute out. Yes, yeah. so the, it's the, 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 the phrasing is the opposite. Yeah. Right. So you distribute to go from here to there. You factor to go from here to there. Um, so you put in parentheses in is factor in. Taking parentheses out is distribute. Okay, so now there's a multiplication. Now we're allowed to cancel. And that's the correct answer. And it's a nice problem. Uh, like all the mistakes that I mentioned could happen in this one problem. There's going to come a point where we want to plug in zero for that, which will give the division by zero mistake. Um, but uh, ultimately, we cancel the H's here. And you'll see later on why we care about h equals zero. But what I've also seen happen is people forgetting the parentheses here, so these things don't die. So there's an extra h in the bottom that doesn't get plugged in, and then someone tries to plug in zero and tells me, oh, that's uh, infinite. No, it's, it's meaningless. You, you can't have that. So um, that problem showcases uh, a lot of stuff, everything I talked about. And a lot of problems would be like that, actually. Okay. Now, these uh, things that I just mentioned, I went through the painstaking process of actually showing them to you because they're important in the sense that if you make any of these mistakes, well, probably not four, but the first three, I'm going to give you zero for the problem that you make it in. I'm not going not to read anything. I, I see you cancel across some, forget it, I'm not reading anymore. Zero. Okay? It's very important that you obey these rules. If you do so, it's actually going to save you a lot of pain. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's actually move. Okay, contact. Um, I will contact you at your college email um, from my email or from Jupiter Grades. Let, let me actually do that now. So I keep your grades in an electronic system called Jupyter Grades. And every now and then, I might send out a mass email from the, that system. And you should just be aware that you should be looking out for it. Let me actually do that now. homework and other important information. If you are new to Jupyter, we to create a password. Okay, so I just sent everyone a mass email from that. You can check that after class and you should get it. Um, but yeah, um, I'll contact you. It'll usually be important when I contact you. Um, so you should always be on the lookout. Feedback. Feedback is important. I highly encourage feedback. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, is it appropriate. Um, you should, we're in this together. I'm teaching. I want you to learn. So give me feedback on how things are going. Just make it constructive. So don't be like, your teaching sucks. Be like, your teaching sucks because. Um, and if you're ever in need of any help, there are many places that you can get help. Um, so first of all, there's me. I'm probably your number one stop. Uh, so you have my office hours and you have my email so you can try to connect with me. Uh, like I said, the website will have a lot of useful things on it. Uh, the math help room, so it's in 410, which is just through those doors, straight ahead. Uh, it's not open, but I think it opens up next week. 
So usually you have a faculty member there or some upperclassmen who will help you with your math woes. And it's usually open between 9.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Lots of online resources that even I use almost on a daily basis. Wolfram Alpha, Symbol Lab, Graph.tk, Desmos, Khan Academy, Paul's Online Math Notes, YouTube, Google. There's so much information out there. Uh, your classmates are another resource, so it seems like some of you already know each other. But if you don't know anybody, you should actually get the contact information of one other person. At least I think it will be a good idea. We do have disability services here. If you have some sort of disability, if your vision is not great, your hearing is not great, whatever. If there is something that you think uh, will cause you to not perform as well, you should stop by these people and see if you can get accommodations because in order to give you those accommodations, which I have to give you by law if you're entitled to them, uh, you have to actually uh, set up a dialogue with these people because they have to contact me and I have to, we have to be in communication to have everything set up. Usual rules, no eating in class. You can drink coffee if you want. I don't. Is it even allowed here? I don't know. We have a carpet. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Uh, you just don't cheat. If you cheat, I'll fail you. Uh, selected dates from the academic calendar. Uh, so, first day of classes, yay. And of course, spring break, uh, Easter break. Uh, midterms week, uh, finals week, end of last day of classes. It's all here. Last day to withdraw from the class. Um, this is, these are just some excerpts. The full academic calendar you can find here, and if you're in the electronic version of the syllabus, you can actually click on that. And this is the game plan. This is what we will be covering in this class. So, when I mentioned earlier that reading ahead is a good thing to do, um, now you know how to read ahead. You'll know what we're going to cover before I actually cover it, so you can actually go ahead of me. These are problems in the textbook for extra practice. Like I said, homework is online, so I'm not collecting these. But if you realize that you need more um, uh, help on a topic, you would want to do that. Exams locations can be found here. So there's exam one, exam two, and the final. Notice that exam one will occur on February 28th. That's the date. That's not going to change. Uh, exam two will occur on April 29th. April 30th is the last day of class, but we don't have class on April 30th. That's a Thursday. Um, final exam. This is our, this is section R03. So, your final is on May 5th, so you know it right now. Don't make any travel plans. May 5th at 9.30 a.m. is your final exam. Final exam is going to be like two hours. Uh, there's, this is hyperlinked if you're on the electronic version to the uh, final exam calendar, which they <coughs> usually update like when there's a month left in the semester. And the last page is the questionnaire, which you can uh, fill out and attach. Some of you I know we're, we're filling it out for um, in the meantime, while the rest of you are brushing up on that. Any questions, concerns, comments? We're all cool, we understand the rules, how things are going to work. And in uh, the questionnaires and the quizzes at the same time. Notice this one is double sided. All responses are equally weighted, so do what's easiest first. It's probably easier to do even the last problem first, because these are just some quick sketches that you probably know by heart. And knock those out in a minute, hopefully. Other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow.